Hi, I'm Gabriel Bossa with the Training and Transitions Committee of the American College of Chess Physicians, and congratulations on having your abstract accepted as an oral case presentation to the Chess International meeting. We happen to be outside of a session here, and I'd like to take you inside to give you some tips and advice on how to give a terrific presentation. Well, thank you all for attending uh, this session. Our next uh, presenter is Dr. Bad, presenter who will be uh, discussing his uh, presentation on uh, respiratory failure in an immunocompromised patient. Dr. Presenter. Uh, thank you, thank you. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna start off uh, with a little history if, uh, if that's okay with everybody. This is a 29-year-old female admitted with uh, respiratory distress, hypoxemia. Uh, she's status post living unrelated kidney transplant in okay. 2004. Okay, first things first, Fevers, don't use yeah. the laser pointer to point out every word on the slide and don't simply read the slides. Try to give some information that's not up there. Everybody back here can read. Moving on with some further history, she was treated with Ivy Levaquin and Van Kinzosin at an outside hospital three days prior to transfer. Also diagnosed with CMV infection at outside hospital, treated with Valcite. Okay, this slide is way too busy. The font is way too small and people won't be able to read that and there's a lot of trade names on this slide. So a good rule of thumb is to use at least size 28 font. Use only three or four bullet points per slide and don't use any brand names of drugs. Use only generic names. Let's skip ahead and see how he does in a couple slides. Labs include a sodium of 133, potassium of 3.5, bicarb of 17, chloride is 105, BUN is 27, creatinine is 2.2, Okay, he's at six minutes and he's still going through the lab data from the case, which means he has less than four minutes to go through all of his discussion and that's not enough time. As a general rule, you should take less than a third of the time for your case presentation and leave the rest of the time for the discussion. So for a 10 minute presentation, that would be about three minutes for the case write up. Moving on with some imaging. The chest x-ray report said that there were bilateral infiltrates and I'm pretty sure that that area is right around here and the area over here. Okay, several things going on here. First of all, there's a lot of protected health information on that slide and all of the images need to be scrubbed of any patient identifiers. Second, you should maximize the amount of area that your images take up so that they're as large as possible so that your audience can see them as well as they can. And lastly, review your images with experts ahead of time so that you are confident in the interpretation and don't just read the report. Let's skip ahead again and see how he does toward the end of the presentation. The patient then had a bronchoscopy with BAL. It showed a lymphocytosis. It was intracellular budding. We're going to need you to wrap things up within the next 30 seconds, please. Okay. The moderator's job is to pay attention and give you a signal when your time is almost up. There were no acid fast organisms. <clears throat> Histoplasmosis uh, was the diagnosis. Urinary and serum antigens were turned positive that day. Okay, so the big question in this case was the treatment, amphotericin or intraconazole. According to the IDSA guidelines in 2007, they recommend reserving ampho for more severe manifestations requiring ventilatory supported therapy. Our patient was treated with ambisimine, required two days of CPAP. Did she just say ambisimine? Yeah, he said recovered fully. Instructed to avoid chickens at the farm, treated with itraconazole, and then DC for one year. Okay, I, th I think we're going to need to stop there. Thank you very much. We want to give the audience a few minutes to ask some questions, and then before we move on to our next presenter. Thank, thank you very much. Any questions from the audience? Make sure you stay under your 10-minute time limit to respect the other presenters in the session. In summary, here are several do's and don'ts to remember when preparing your slides and talk for your oral presentation. First, you're going to want to load your session in the speaker ready room at least several hours and preferably a day before your presentation. This allows you to make sure that your presentation works the way it did at home and that you, any audio or video that you're using is compatible with the presentation software. Second, keep your font size at one that everyone can read. On these slides, I've used size 28, and that's a good rule of thumb. Third, general rule is to use only three or four bullet points per slide. If you're going to use more like I have on this slide, make sure that they're very short. Lastly, know your pronunciations. Pronouncing ambisome as ambisomy is a recipe for disaster. Don't overload your slides. Three to four bullet points is plenty, and putting a list of 30 medications on one slide probably is not going to help you. Don't differ your fonts and your slide designs from slide to slide. It's confusing for the audience. Make sure you scrub any patient identifiers from any imaging that you have in order to avoid any HIPAA violations. 
and don't go over time. It will drive the moderators crazy. Lastly, practice your presentation at your institution with a critical audience. Ask your program director if they wouldn't mind getting a group of people together to listen to you present and give you critical feedback. They will touch on all of the points we've touched on today and make sure it's as polished and ready as it can be. Good luck and again, congratulations on having an oral presentation accepted to the CHEST International Conference. Uh, for the record, Dr. Bad Presenter is really uh, Dr. Peter Lentz from University of Cincinnati. We want to thank him for acting in this role. Uh, we want you to recognize that uh, Dr. Bad Presenter and the University of Nowhere are fictitious uh, people and places, and any resemblance to familiar people or institutions is purely coincidence.